In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome to Comet Chasing for November of 2025. If you're not out looking at the sky right now, you're missing something special. Comet 2025 A6 Lemon is putting on a stunning display in the western sky after sunset, with intricate details visible through telescopes that are changing from night to night. The images and drawings coming in are extraordinary. In its own unique way, this is right up there with the most amazing comets we've seen. And if that's not enough to get you outside, the alien comet, our interstellar visitor, is back. And now you can see it. Comet 3i Atlas is an object that formed in another solar system and is likely older than our sun and planets. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see something that traveled across the galaxy. So let's talk about how and when to see these amazing objects, because the time to observe them is right now. When it comes to 2025 A6 Lemon, I would want to say something like, this is the best comet in a long time. But given the amazing comets that have passed through the inner solar system in just the last few years, that's a difficult case to make. It's easy to point to another comet and say, that one's better because... What this highlights is that every comet is unique, which makes it very difficult to compare them. It really is like picking your favorite child. Looking back in my lifetime, Yakutake was memorable because it was huge and fast moving and it passed near the Earth. Hale Bop hung in the western sky for weeks as an easy naked eye object, giving most everyone on Earth a chance to see it. Comet McNaught was photographed with this huge arcing tail and remnants of previous tails stretching across the sky. In 2020, Neowise lit up the western sky. In 2023, Comet 12b suddenly erupted overnight brightening by over five magnitudes and ultimately revealing this weird notch in its coma. And as recently as last year, we had 2024 G3 Atlas, visible to the unaided eye and stunningly beautiful in photographs. We can argue about which is the best comet and which ones are great comets and which ones aren't, but they can't really be compared. Each of these comets was very memorable and often for very different reasons. And right now, tonight, we have this. Look at these images. Sadly, media coverage of this one has been light. Looking back over the decades, 2025 A6 Lemon may well be the best comet for a long time. The string of amazing comets we've had in the last few years is not the norm. In the past, we've got many years between seeing comets as good as this one. And the time to look at it is now because it's right there in the western sky after sunset. It appears as a smudge of light in binoculars and looks stunning in photographs. But most of all, and what will make this comet so memorable and rare, is the ever-changing detail visible in the eyepiece, as captured in these wonderful drawings. Just look at that. Unlike a photograph, which can capture detail that can't be seen in a telescope, these drawings show what we can expect to see for ourselves. It is on the fade now, so get out there as soon as you can. And if you're using a telescope, try higher magnifications on the comet's coma to look for details. Keep watching to see if you can spot any features changing, and come back the next clear night to see a whole new view. The comet is bright enough that it can be seen from suburban locations, and even when the moon is up. The bright sky from either of these things will make it difficult to trace the full tail, but the dusty part of the comma and the details in the comma will largely be unaffected. In this image by Jason Dane, we can clearly see two components of the tail. The blue is the gas tail, made up of ionized gas that is being carried away with the charged particles of the solar wind. The gas moves quickly and in more or less a straight line always pointing away from the sun. So, from looking at this image, we know the sun is in the opposite direction of the tail. The comet is moving perpendicularly to the tail, from right to left. As it moves, the heavier dust particles 
interact with the solar wind more slowly and become separated from the comet. These dust particles are moving away from the sun, but being slowly spread out along the orbit. The result is a big blob of dust with no detail, which is brighter in the eyepiece than the gas tail. On October 30th, Val Italo combined multiple 15 second exposures to make this movie, showing the motion of the comet over just 40 minutes. The movement of the streamers of gas is extraordinary. He used a Celestron 8 inch telescope equipped with a Hyperstar and an ASI 294MC color camera and f1.9. He also reported that he could see the comet in one and a half degrees of the tail with his naked eye. 2025A6 begins the month in Ophiuchus at magnitude 3.8. Look for a 6.5 arc minute coma. The condensation is a bright diffuse spot at the center of the coma. It should fade and shrink to half its current size by the end of the month, although visibility in the evenings will improve with each night. At 40 degrees north, it is visible in the evenings at the end of twilight. It will be obvious in binoculars until the 11th and remain perceptible through the 19th. It may still be possible to see it by the naked eye in the first few days of the month. The best method to spot it with the naked eye is to first find it in binoculars and then holding your eyes fixed, lower the binoculars. You should still be looking right at it. If you don't see it directly, try looking a little to the side until you can just make out a little fuzzy spot. From 30 degrees south, it is also visible in the evenings at the end of twilight. It'll be easy in binoculars through the 18th and perceptible through November 22nd. And well, as if that isn't enough, this month also heralds the return of the alien comet, 3 I Atlas, which has been hiding from us in the glare of the sun. We had thought it might only be visible in larger telescopes, but it brightened just before it was lost, and now we are predicting visibility in small telescopes. Some observations were recently reported by a satellite designed to observe the vicinity of the sun, and the first ground-based observations have also come in. These are all consistent with the brightening we saw in September, so we can be pretty confident about our predictions unless something dramatically changes. 3I Atlas is a morning comet. Okay, hold on. We think this is worth getting up early to see with our own eyes. It's a visitor that formed in another solar system and likely much older than our sun and planets. I don't want to look back one day and think, why on earth didn't I go out and look at that thing? 3I will be generally visible in small telescopes at a dark site, or a 12 and a half inch or a 32 centimeter telescope under a country sky. So those with small scopes, you may need to make a bit of a drive out of town to see it. It begins the month in Virgo at magnitude 10.9. Look for one and a half arc minute coma with a diffuse condensation at the center. It should fade by about 0.8 magnitude by the end of the month. From 40 degrees north, it'll be best starting on the morning of November 12th through the end of the month, although it may be glimpsed before then. As we mentioned, a dark location will be required to see it in telescopes smaller than 12.5 inches. From 30 degrees south, it will also be observable, but more difficult. Both a dark site and at least a 12 and a half inch, 32 centimeter telescope will be required to easily spot it. If you are experienced, have good charts, a very dark site with some elevation, it may be possible to spot in small telescopes after the 13th. I'm going after it in my 8-inch outreach telescope, and here is the chart that I prepared for the morning of November 26. This morning may offer the easiest opportunity to track it down because it will lie on a straight line from this bright pair of naked eye stars, Eta and 13 Ver. Now, I don't usually use this channel to directly promote my SkyTools software, but having a chart like this, which uses calculations, to determine what you can see from your location and in your telescope with the correct magnitude limit and orientation 
That makes it a lot easier to find difficult targets, even if you have a telescope that points close to the right spot in the sky automatically. However you do it, get up, get some coffee and get out there. You may never get a chance to see an interstellar visitor again. For those interested in what we've learned about this comet from our instruments, where it likely formed, and when, we have a video that follows the journey of 3i from birth in story form as told by the comet itself. The short story is immediately followed by a discussion about how we know the basis for the story. You may be surprised to find that much of the actual science is going unreported, lost in the noise, and you know who I mean. But there's more. Right. Let's not forget that there are more comets to look at this month. Our next is 2025 R2 Swan. This poor comet has been overshadowed by both 3i Atlas and 2025A6. But it's out there waiting for you to have a look. 2025 R2 Swan is an evening comet visible in binoculars from a dark site or small telescopes from a suburban or country location. This comet begins the month in Aquarius at magnitude 7.3. Look for a six arc minute coma with the center much brighter than the edges, though still diffuse. A short 17 arc minute tail may be visible, but it's more likely you will see a small round fuzzball. It should fade rapidly, moving into Pisces by month's end. So if you haven't spotted it yet, time is running out. Add this one to your observing list after you go out to see 2025A6. This comet is visible higher in the sky after twilight, so we can take advantage of a dark sky, perhaps around 7 p.m. local standard time. From a dark site at 40 degrees north, it'll be perceptible in binoculars on November 2nd. And after that, from the 6th through the 20th. You might still glimpse it from suburban skies if you have clear weather and experience. In that case, it'll be difficult to spot from suburban skies and then challenging starting on November 13th. From 30 degrees south, it'll be perceptible in binoculars from a dark site through the 20th. Lastly, we'll add an honorable mention for 24P Schumacher. This is a morning comet visible in an 8-inch or 20-centimeter telescope at a dark site, or a 14-inch, 36-centimeter telescope under a country sky. It begins the month in Cancer at magnitude 15.1. Look for a one arc minute coma with a diffuse condensation at the center. It should brighten rapidly, moving into Leo by month's end. From 40 degrees north at a dark site, it'll be visible in an 8-inch telescope, rising with Leo. Here's the thing. While it will be technically at its best before dawn, when highest in the sky, it will be observable after midnight. It is best to look for it late in the month, starting on the 23rd or 24th. It will also be visible from 30 degrees south, but harder to spot. And it is best to wait until November 26th, 27th. Well, that's it for November. It's a busy month with some amazing comet observing. Here's hoping your skies are clear.